So now we're going to move on to the auxiliary brachial plexus block, which is a great block for hand and forearm surgery and even surgery on the elbow. I'm going to use a high frequency linear probe and you may have noticed I've activated the virtual convex function which is available on the right hand side of the screen here and that just increases the, the field of view here. Having um, placed my probe on, in the axilla, the left hand side of the screen is lateral or kephalad, the right hand side of the screen is chordad or medial. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to identify the, the axillary artery. So if I put the colour Doppler on and move over the axillary artery you'll see a pulsatile structure there and as I release the pressure you'll see some veins appear. So a bit of pressure over here in the centre of the screen is the axillary artery. As I release the pressure you'll see the veins and note there is definitely more than one and in this model's case it looks like we've got at least three axillary veins. So if I go back to just scanning now, um, so I can identify on the screen there a nice circular hypochoic structure which is the axillary artery. The next thing I want to do is to know where the, um, the other structures are around it. So over here is a muscle, this is the biceps brachii and deep to the biceps brachii is the coracobrachialis. On the right hand side of the screen is this sort of amorphous mass of muscle uh, and where most people tend to place their probe in the axilla is at a point when the radial artery is dived out of the way and they're, they're scanning over here over the triceps. This is not where to perform an axillary brachial plexus block and the key is to slide the probe more medial. As I slide the probe more medial, look at the right hand side of the screen. So I'm going more medial towards the chest wall and look what happens. You hear you get a beautiful structure coming up on the screen. This is the conjoint tendon formed from latissimus dorsi and teres major and you know you're in the right place when you get this very obvious uh, white line coming up over here. So let me see if I can direct that for you. So we've got a nice white line coming up right the way over here. So this bright white line, that thick fascia, that's the conjoint tendon and that is a key landmark. So if you get this image on the screen when you're doing an auxiliary brachial plexus block, you're not proximal enough. You need to slide your probe back towards the midline and as you do that you get that very obvious distinction. You get that thick muscle band there of teres major and latissimus dorsi. You've got a thick white line here. This is the conjoint tendon and that is a key landmark. So having identified the axillary artery and the big axillary vein there and the smaller axillary vein underneath it, um, we're then going to revisit the muscles. So you've got biceps brachii, coracobrachialis, and now this is the conjoint tendon below which is teres major and latissimus dorsi. Now we need to look for the four nerves relevant for an axillary brachial plexus block. The first nerve is the muscular cutaneous nerve, then the median, the ulna and the radial. So let's focus on the muscular cutaneous first. If I slide the probe slightly towards our model's head, you'll notice that you've got biceps brachii and coracobrachialis, and we're going to look specifically at that space between the two muscles. The muscular cutaneous nerve normally lies between those muscles, and as I slide the probe further down and all the way up, you're looking for a thin structure. And at this point, it has a nickname of snake eyes because it tends to have two small components to it. This is the muscular cutaneous nerve sandwiched between these two muscles. As I slide proximally, it goes up to join the axillary artery at that area. And as I slide distally, you'll see it will come out in between those muscles. And you can trace it as a consistent structure the whole way. So that is the muscular cutaneous nerve, which is present in about 80% of patients. You will see it lying between those muscles. That's always the first structure I, uh, I aim to identify. So that's the muscular cutaneous nerve. And it's this whole structure right way over here. Now I'm going to focus my attention on the axillary artery and the first thing I'm going to do is to increase and release my pressure. So as you increase and release the pressure you can use the veins as they appear as a contrast against any other structures that may be there. It's relatively common for the muscular cutaneous nerve, sorry for the median nerve which to lie somewhere if you think about the axillary artery as a clock face to lie somewhere between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock and I'm going to point your attention to this really large circular structure over here. This whole structure here is likely to be the median nerve. But how can we clarify? Well, if we trace the axillary artery down the arm and focus our attention on the top of it, so right underneath the yellow arrow there, that structure which I call the median nerve is still there. And as you slide down towards the antecubital fossa, the structure is still very much there. It's got a vein above it. We're keeping sliding down towards the antecubital fossa and that median nerve now is going to flip around at about here. 
It's going to flip around to lie on the medial aspect. There it is, it's flipping around, lying on the medial aspect of what is now the brachial artery. So this structure, which we can visualize right over here, this is the median nerve, it's now moved from the lateral aspect of the artery to the medial aspect of the artery, which lies right medial here in the uh, antecubital fossa. So that's the median nerve, I've got my pointer on it here, and if I now follow this whole structure right the way back up towards the axilla, we'll keep it in the center of the screen, you see it stays with the artery the whole way, and now it's moving slightly separated, I'm going right the way up to the axilla, and the median nerve is still right by the axillary artery, and here it go, it moves around to that 11 o'clock position, exactly where we told you it was. So we've now confirmed, we're scanning down, and the trace back method, that's the median nerve. So now I'm gonna release the pressure again, and, in, and increase it, and as I do that, you may notice there's another structure which is visible right away over here. So the ulnar nerve generally tends to lie between the axillary artery and the vein, or multiple veins, and at the moment it's performing, or it's producing, uh, a little appearance right over here. Let me get that pointer back. So this, it almost looks like Mickey Mouse. Two ears of Mickey Mouse, uh, and then the, the auxiliary artery is forming the head of Mickey Mouse. So I would bet my money on the fact that this is the ulnar nerve. Now as we scan down the arm towards the ulnar groove, the ulnar nerve should shoot off to the right-hand side of the screen. So let's have a look and see if that's the case. The ulnar nerve is now positioned underneath that yellow arrow, and as we scan further down the arm, let's focus our attention on it. And here we go, there's a circular honeycomb-like structure, which is the ulnar nerve. And as we're scanning down, there it is, it's right underneath the fascia, right the way over here. And as we scan further away, towards the ulnar groove, there you can see it's right underneath the fascia. So there is the ulnar nerve. As I get closer and closer towards our model's elbow, you'll see it's going to dive into the ulnar groove. So that is the ulnar nerve. Let's go right the way back up. Keep the ulnar nerve in the centre of the screen and it's gonna come up and meet the median nerve. So there it is, coming up to meet the median nerve, right the way over there, as we come to where we perform our block. So here we go, we've got the Mickey Mouse sign, you've got two ears, the median nerve ear, the median nerve right the way over here, and the ulnar nerve, and there is the axillary artery. We go right the way up to where we see the conjoint tendon. You see at this point, the ulnar nerve is just sandwiched between those two veins. So we've now demonstrated musculocutaneous, median and ulnar in a relatively classic position. The last nerve we need to visualize is the radial nerve. The reason I pointed out the conjoint tendon as an area to identify at the beginning is because in almost all cases, the radial nerve will lie on the surface of the conjoint tendon. So this is the conjoint tendon over here. So somewhere along this surface is gonna be the radial nerve. So how do we identify that? Well, I'm gonna focus my attention on that conjoint tendon. I'm gonna rotate the probe in towards the chest wall and then I'm gonna pull the probe away. As I pull the probe away, you'll notice something's starting to fall down. So I'm gonna pull the probe away and there's a structure diving down and I'm gonna go back up again. And as we go back up again, I'm now gonna focus my attention on this area over here. So this I think is the radial nerve as we slide back up towards that conjoint tendon, you can see here it's right underneath the axillary artery. So here is the radial nerve right underneath the axillary artery. I'm gonna go even more further up. And as I go further up, you're gonna see it's gonna just literally tuck in underneath the ulnar nerve. So right over here on the screen, we've got the radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, and the musculocutaneous is just over here. So let's focus our attention on the radial nerve again. It's right underneath, as I increase and release the pressure, you can see that contrast of the veins. And then on this screen, you can see the median here, the ulna and the radial. And the radial is literally underneath that vein, lying on the conjoint tendon. And as I slide away, you're gonna see the, the radial nerve is gonna dive down. See here it is diving down. And it's accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral artery. There it is, or the, the deep artery that's coming off there and right underneath the artery there you can see the radial nerve. So you can see if you were to perform your brachial plexus block not proximal enough without the conjoint tendon being in there it's possible that you might miss this radial nerve. So if you go right the way up you can see here this is the blood vessel, this is the deep artery joining the axillary artery and the radial nerve has moved right the way over there. So in this one screen here we've got all of the structures necessary to perform an axillary brachial plexus block. Musculocutaneous nerve the median nerve, the ulnar nerve right next to it, and the radial nerve underneath that.